Well hopefully you can hear me over all the fan noise. In this series of videos I'm attempting to repair this PDP 1134 vintage computer. Uh, so far in this series uh, I've gone through quite a few faults with the CPU. Uh, I've now got it up to the point where it is uh, at least um, superficially running. It can uh, load uh, instructions, programs from memory, execute them and it seems to be going through most of them without issue. There are still some faults with it I, I know about that I have to deal with but the next thing I want to do is see if we can try and get this to boot up properly and that includes from a floppy drive. Now I think there's a fault with the uh, bootloader card, there's a, a, an M9312 um, card in this and uh, that contains the uh, boot ROM for the console emulator and also the uh, boot uh, ROM or bootloader for the floppy drive. Now I've got the correct bootloader for the floppy drive, this is an RX02 and um, the controller is the correct controller for this drive uh, but it's not really doing what it's supposed to. Uh, on the um, boot loader card there are a series of dip switches and if we look at the documents uh, there are uh, instructions in here telling you how to set those dip switches depending on where you have the particular ROM fitted and uh, whether you want diagnostics. So I've got all these switches set correctly, they were set wrong and with them set incorrectly um, the system will boot into the remote uh, terminal emulator. Uh, but I've got them set right now and now it won't boot up. It's doing something a bit uh, strange. It's trying to constantly boot from floppy drive and it doesn't matter if I have the auto boot switch in the on or off position. So in the off position it should uh, effectively boot up and not try to boot from floppy drive. Um, but I'll power this up and you'll see what it's doing. I'm going to power up the floppy drive as well. Unfortunately it's fairly noisy so um, it's going to get fairly loud. So that's the floppy drive running. We'll now power up the PDP. So as you hear it's trying to constantly boot from floppy drive. And what I'm going to do is put in a floppy drive, uh, sorry, floppy disk into the drive. Now this is not a bootable disk, but it is a, an RX02 high or double density disk. So I'll put that in, and this drive is set up so it should in theory be able to read single density and double density floppy disks. So I've got that in a drive. Unfortunately I can't get everything into the camera, so it's the left hand drive I have to use, the drive zero. Power this back up. So notice this time it does something different, it runs through a few times and um, it's going through, if I look at the logic analyzer then it's, it's actually branching to the correct address and um, it is trying to load some code from the floppy drive and if we look at the code it's trying to load it is of course just uh, random data, it's just a few bytes uh, and then it crashes because it's not an actual bootable disk. What I'll do now is I'll swap the disk that's in here with what in theory should be a bootable disk. It's the only one I have but unfortunately I think it might be corrupt. Um, but we'll see what uh, difference it makes. So this is labelled as an RT11 boot disk. And um, I'll try putting that in. I don't know what's on it. I've never used that disk before so I don't know if it uh, ever was a boot disk. It's in the drive now. We'll try and reboot the PDP. So the behaviour's changed, it's still continually trying to reboot, but it's slower. And if we look at it with a scope, I'll just stop it running. If we look at the activity with a scope, it is actually reading some data. Not only that, but if we look at the uh, memory locations, they've all changed, uh, starting at address zero. And it does look like there is data in there, and it even matches the data that I can see coming out of the floppy drive. If I look at the raw data, what we're seeing in the memory is correct. It's quite hard to capture the transfers, it uses DMA for the data transfers so I can't really use, it's not really synchronized with the main CPU clock, it's um, it kind of runs asynchronously with that 
and it, uh, the transfers are kind of between bus cycles so it's quite difficult to capture that activity. You can do it, I need to use the clock that's on the uh, controller card but uh, at the moment I'm just trying to figure out overall what's going on and it might just be as simple as I don't have a boot disk and I've got a feeling that's what the problem is. Now if anyone has an RT11 boot disk and has tried this can you let me know what the first 20 or so uh, values should be that it reads when bootloading uh, for example if you go once you've done the bootload stop it before it starts up the RT11 uh, software uh, go to address 0 and then just look at the first few uh, values that are present so starting at 0 for example I'm getting 240 this is optical course uh, 413 0 0 0 0 120 340 so that sort of thing and um, again what's uh, making me think this might be valid code is if we look at the values and the addresses then we do seem to be getting what amounts to uh, a proper uh, bootable uh, or a start of a bootable image but I've got a feeling it's just not uh, complete it might be that um, part of the disk is corrupt but um, uh, so I don't want to go chasing hardware faults when it's probably just as simple as the boot disk itself is not right. The only thing that's strange is when I take the disk out and uh, we're set to not auto boot it just continuously tries to boot up but I've got a feeling that might well be a problem with the bootloader card. So fairly short video today and um, just showing you the progress that uh, I've made uh, we are getting there, we're getting to the point now where at least the drive is responding to the um, PDP. Um, last time I tried this the PDP died part way through and that's what we've been chasing uh, for the last uh, 15 videos or so. Uh, so it's getting interesting, uh, we are getting there but uh, it's still going to take a while to uh, get all this sorted out. I've still got the cache memory to uh, work my way through the floating point unit. Um, but the next thing I'd really like to do is get it booting from a floppy disk. If you do have any um, floppy disks that you could t uh, copy, bootable floppy disk uh, for RT11, suitable for RX02, um, I would very much appreciate a copy. I'm quite happy to uh, pay for the disk in your time. So having a known good disk could save me a lot of time chasing hardware faults that don't exist. It does appear to be transferring data and um, as I said, that's really as far as I can go without knowing what particular data it should be transferring.